Praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to the Elizabeth City Baptist Church. I've spent the last 10 minutes out there in the parking lot, and I'm chilled to bone. And it is cold out there. And I don't know where this wind came from, but it's here. But I'm sure just as quick as it came, it will be gone, and we'll be back to our spring weather. Thank you for being faithful to the house of the Lord. If you would, please, let's stand and grab your blue songbook for the Philip Elitas in our first tent. Join me at 601, 601 in the blue hymnals now. Let us be leaning on the everlasting arms of our Lord. 601, join me on the first verse. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Join me on the second verse now. Oh, how sweet to walk. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path. Lord, we thank you so much to be in your house this morning, Lord. We thank you for bringing every, all of us here together. Lord, I pray that you help us to set aside any distractions that may be in our heart and mind, Lord, to put them aside and to focus on you and on your word. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit would work through the preaching of your word in our hearts and that we would make decisions this morning and be drawn ever closer to thee. Lord, we love you. We need your blessing this morning. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Join me, congregation, at 643, 643 in your blue hymnals now. Heaven came down and glory had filled my soul. 643 on the first verse now. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shout of spelling with joys I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Slip it up. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away. And my night was turned to day. Good singing. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Born of the Spirit, verse number two. Born of the Spirit with life from above. Into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love. Oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made. When as a sinner and I came. On the upper of grace, he saved me all praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Good singing, lift it up to the Lord. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. And my night was turned to day. Sing it! Heaven came down and glory on the third, now I have hope. Now I have hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure. There in those mansions of mine. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Rich is eternal. Blessings of eternal from his precious hand. I warm 
a time now. And they came down and glory filled my soul. Glory filled my soul. When at the cross my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. And heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Finish it up with me now. Amen. I love that part of the song. My sins were washed away Amen. and my night was turned to day. Okay, can, can we all say, pray, let's all say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Amen. Well, we got to be excited that our sins have been washed away. And maybe we're not excited about anything else in our life, but we can be excited about that. All right. Hey, I enjoyed parking people in our new parking lot today. And if, if you were here on Wednesday, this is your second time parking. But if you came here this morning, uh, we got the parking lot all done. And so it's uh, much more organized and I appreciate it. And we even had um, some last minute spots left over for some people that needed a front row spot. And I'm thankful for that. All right. Wanted to mention a couple things before I forget this evening. We'll be, we will be partaking of the Lord's Supper at the end of the six o'clock service. And you're all welcome to be a part of that. You don't have to be a member. Uh, you do need to be saved. So if you've never been saved and truly born again, of course, it, may, it would make no sense to take the Lord's Supper. But I encourage you to come tonight at the end of the six o'clock service as we partake of the Lord's Supper. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, or as many people would call it, Easter Sunday. And I encourage you to be in the Lord's house for that. If any Sunday, make sure that you make it for next Sunday. We have some special flyers on the foyer out there. And Easter Sunday can be one of the best, maybe one of the easiest times of the year to get folks to come to church. In fact, some folks, they only come to church on Easter Sunday and, and when you have free food. OK, that also is very helpful. But uh, we want them to come this week. At the end of the service, we'll be having a little photo booth set up. So if you don't have to, but if you'd like to get your picture taken or your children's picture taken or anything like that, uh, the church will be um, taking care of that and we'll get a copy printed out. So that'll be available on the next Sunday. We've got a nice light, nice white backdrop. So whatever you wear, make sure it goes with a white backdrop. OK, and that'll be next Sunday after the service, after the 11 o'clock service. And also immediately following this service, uh, we will have a brief brief. How long is brief? Well, it's before lunch, so it will be brief, but we will be having a brief nursery workers meeting. And for any other ladies that are interested in serving in the nursery, it'll be held in the Miss Patty's classroom there. And um, I encourage you to come for that. But if you do currently work in the nursery, we need you to attend that meeting, please. And uh, praise the Lord. Outside of that, I'm just happy to be in church today. Amen. And excited about what the Lord's got in store. Let's all stand as we sing in a moment. The Children's Church, ages two through six, will dismiss to the fellowship hall with my wife. Brother Phil, come and lead us in our... Thank you. The family of God, 542, 542. Let's make sure we welcome our visitors with Christ's love. And I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, and joined hands with Jesus as we travel this side. For a part of the family, the family of God. Amen.
but join me one more time in the wonderful chorus, The Family of God. Here we go now. And I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleanse his blood, and join heads with Jesus as we travel this You may be seated. You may be seated. Now, before we take up the offering, I have to confess some things. You know, many of you, you know that I've been struggling with an addiction, and it's been constant. I mean, year after year. I mean, week in, week out. And what I'm addicted to is coffee. And uh, but I just want to let everyone know that I have the solution to my addiction. And normally, I drink several cups of coffee a day, a few to several. But now I'm going to just one cup a day, and so. You can take my name off the prayer list. I'm only going down to one cup of coffee a day. And I uh, appreciate that, Miss Tracy. Looking forward to my coffee. Amen. That's what we call a man-sized coffee cup because it holds a whole pot. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Uh, we're going to take up our offering. If I could call on Brother Scott, Brother Josh is going to help us today, Brother James Teachy, and Brother um, Kelvin. Sorry for forgetting your name. Kevin, come on down, gentlemen, please. And I appreciate that. Appreciate Brother Josh helping out. Looking sharp. And uh, we'll have um, Brother James Teachy and Brother Scott on the inside. And then Josh and Brother Kelvin on the wings, please. Thank you. Thank you. Our giving verse for this month comes uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 2. The Bible says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And Brother James Teachy, would you please pray for the tithes and offerings? Thank you.
Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Now, after a piano special like that, I mean, any sermon is just going to be subpar. So I apologize in advance. That's my disclaimer. But no, I'm excited about the message this morning. This is something that the Lord has laid on my heart. Is this microphone on, sound man? We're good to go, brother? Thank you. And so I, I know it'll be a great help to you. I'm going to ask you to please take your Bibles to the New Testament and the book of Romans. Now, some of the teens are here. We went on a teen trip, so go to the table of contents to the New Testament half, and you'll find Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter number one, please. I'll go ahead and get there myself. Romans chapter number one. Praise the Lord, and we'll go ahead and get started here in the Word of God. Romans chapter number one. Throughout the week, I will plan different sermons, and I'll have different notes put in place, and then I'll pray over each and every one of those sermons and potential sermons and ask for the Lord's guidance and wisdom into which one to preach. And I never want to get behind this pulpit and just preach another sermon. Amen. I want to get behind the pulpit and know undoubtedly that this is the message God wants me to bring to his people. And I feel that way very strongly about the sermon this morning, and I hope it will be a help to you. Romans chapter number 1. And verse number 17. Now, this is only one verse, and so we I would like for us all to read this together, if you can. Romans chapter 1 and verse 17. Ready? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, the last, what do we have there? Six words are very famous in the Bible. The just shall live by faith by faith. And so I like to preach a message this morning entitled Living by Faith. You know, there's a song that uh there's a song that was made famous by Lester Roloff. I'm not sure if he wrote the song or not. I believe he may have, but he would always sing it um, before he died. And Lester Roloff had a children's home, sort of as an almost an orphanage in Texas. And uh, of course this was in the um, early to mid 1900s and he faced a great legal battle with getting licensing for that. Uh, Lester Roloff was the pastor of the church there. He was a great evangelist, and he would go around with his um, with his men's quartet, and he had a ladies' uh, group as well. And these were all children that um, that attended the orphanage there, and they would serve with them. Lester Roloff was a pilot, and he would fly himself to all of his meetings. But one of his most famous songs was "Living by Faith," and I believe it's even in our hymn book. Um, I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. And, of course, go living by faith in Jesus above, um, trusting, trusting, confiding in his great love. Praise the Lord. And so the psalm will go on. Just an amazing song. But living by faith this morning, I'd like to preach on exactly what does that mean and what would that look like. It's easy to come to church and praise God. Living by faith in Jesus above. And we understand being saved by faith. I mean, if you're here this morning and there was a point in your life when you got saved, you didn't get saved by your works. You didn't get saved by the baptismal waters. You didn't get saved by a religious action. You were saved by your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says as much, for by grace are you saved through faith. But after getting saved, the Bible wants us to live by faith. That's why the scripture says the just shall live by faith. Now that statement also, when I said the just shall live by faith, maybe a man's name came to mind, a man by the name of Martin Luther. And when I said the just shall live by faith, you might have thought of Martin Luther. Martin Luther also helped make that phrase and that passage of Scripture very famous. And uh, that statement from the Bible is what led Martin Luther of Germany to many years ago um, to post his 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Martin Luther and the 95 theses. This was the start of the Protestant Reformation. And he writes what led him to that conclusion, what led him to make that bold, courageous act was that statement in the scriptures, the just shall live by faith. Now, of course, that was in 1517. This was many, many years ago. Um, now, Martin Luther, although he had that right, and although he stood for things that were right, not everything about Martin Luther was right, okay? And I'm not going to go into all the details, but that's another story for another time. But what he did have right was bringing to light that wonderful scripture, the just shall live by faith. And that's what led him to make a difference, what led him uh, to come out of the Catholic Church and one of the early starts of the Protestant Reformation. Now, back to our text in Romans chapter 1. I already pointed out the just shall live by faith. 
But the few words before that, it says, as it is written. Did you see that? As it is written, the just shall live by faith. That tells us that that phrase, the just shall live by faith, this is not the first time we're going to find it in the Word of God. Jesus, in the New Testament, when the devil came to tempt him, what did Jesus say? It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus did what we would do today to answer a Bible problem or answer a life problem. We would go back to the Word of God. So the Bible says, it is written, the just shall live by faith. Well, in the book of the Old Testament book, and I'll read it to you, in Habakkuk chapter 2, the Bible says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So when the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, and Paul is writing the church of Rome, and he says it is written the just shall live by faith, this is not the first time that God's people had heard of that phrase or had even thought about it. They knew all the way back to the minor prophet Habakkuk that the just shall live by his faith. Not just that the just or the righteous would be saved by his faith or saved by her faith, but that they would live every single day of their lives by their faith. There's a, there's a big difference between being saved by faith and living by faith. Amen? Hey, when you got saved, being saved by faith, that was just a decision. You received the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? You turned into the Lord and you, uh, uh, and you got your heart right with the Lord. I remember getting saved, being four years of age, it didn't cost me any money. I didn't sweat. It wasn't any persecution. I received Christ by faith. But living by faith, that's a little more difficult. Because that means that's something you have to do every single day of the week. And when does it end? It never does until the day that you take your last breath and step into eternity. So the just shall live by his faith. Now that word just, J-U-S-T, is used as a Bible reference to believers. Okay, a common reference to believers to save people to those that have been born again. So we might not necessarily use that in, in our um, lingo or in our vernacular today, but the, when the Bible says the just shall live by faith, it's talking about the believers. Those that have already been saved by faith are now commanded to live by faith. That phrase, the just shall live by faith, is found four separate times in the Bible, but the theme is found all throughout the Scriptures. Let me read just a couple off here. In Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In other words, our, our faith that saves us, it's the faith of our salvation, is not based on whether or not we keep the law or how well we keep the law, but our salvation is based on our faith in Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says, Now the just shall live by faith. I think the Bible is trying to tell us something this morning. And hey, now the Bible, as we're going to see in Hebrews, this is where the Bible comes to life. You say, more than just singing the song, living by faith, more than just being saved by faith, we have wonderful biblical examples of people that truly live by faith. And we need examples to follow. Amen? We need examples to follow. Hey, a son needs a father or a father figure that he can, that he can follow. A church needs a pastor to follow. In fact, that is such a... A strong theme in the scriptures, the Bible says that the bishop is supposed to be an example to the flock. In other words, my job as the pastor is to be right with God and to be the best Christian that I can so that people in the church, if they wanted to, could look at me and say, I want to follow Pastor John. And the Bible even says that Paul instructed Timothy to follow him. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because you see, it's a, in a general sense, we're all following the Lord Jesus Christ. But in a particular sense, in a practical sense, we need somebody to follow. We need somebody that we can understand. We need somebody that has the same struggles and same difficulties. So the Bible comes to life and gives us good examples, role models of people that live by faith. Hey, God illustrated that truth through the lives of Old Testament Bible characters. And in fact, in Sunday school, we've been traveling and journeying and studying through the Old Testament this morning. We learned about Deborah and Barak and J.O., okay? And let me tell you, don't mess with Mrs. J.L., okay? That's what we learn. And uh, if you want to know more about that, well, you're going to have to read Judges chapter 4 and chapter 5. I would like you to take your Bibles now. Please go to Hebrews chapter 11. Farther on in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11. And Hebrews is before the book of James. Hebrews is after the Timothy, uh, first, second Timothy and Titus. Hebrews chapter number 11. Now, we've already seen from the Scriptures that the just shall live by faith, that verse is in there four times. 
Not only are we saved by faith, but we're also commanded to live by faith every single day of our lives. Hebrews chapter number 11. Now, this is where the Bible is going to come to life. We're going to see people of the Old Testament and how they lived by faith and what that meant and what that would look like. Hebrews chapter 11, please. And as we look through this passage of Scripture, we first see in Hebrews chapter 11, we see what faith is. Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. So we learn what faith is. It is the evidence of things that are not seen. If you could fully understand it, if you could fully see it, if you could fully comprehend it, it would not require faith. But when you can't fully understand it, and when you can't fully see it, and when you have a glimpse into it, but still don't see the big picture, that's what takes faith. We believe that Jesus died and rose from the grave, even though we were never there at Calvary. Hey, we believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. We believe that he brought sight to the blind. We believe all that because the Bible told us that's faith, and faith is the evidence of things not seen. Hey, we see uh, that faith that helps us have belief in the creation. Look at verse 3. Through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heaven. and I love how, Gen in the beginning, God. God is the start of everything. And boy, I, I, uh, every time you ever go to a museum or um, any type of exhibit and they have a, a bone or a fossil, and the first thing is millions and millions and millions. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to eradicate God and the story of creation out of world history. My Bible says, in the beginning, God. Everything started with God. But how do we understand that? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You see, we're not just saved by faith. We're to live by faith. Um, now, here we go to some Bible characters. The first one is a man by the name of Abel. Look at verse number four. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. The famous story of Cain and Abel and where Cain brought of the fruits of the ground, and where Abel brought a sacrifice and brought a lamb of, of his flock. They both knew what was the right sacrifice. They both knew what was required. It wasn't that Abel knew what God wanted and Cain did it. But you see, Cain brought of his own works. Cain brought of his own fruits, whereas Abel brought an offering. And Abel followed the Lord. And by faith, Abel did that. Abel believed that if he brought the right kind of sacrifice to God, that God would accept him. And we remember that God accepted Abel's sacrifice, I believe the Bible says, with fire from heaven, okay? Abel believed that that would happen by faith. You see that? God told him what to do, and he did it by faith, and God blessed. But the scripture goes on, verse number five, and we read about brother Enoch. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith, his faith was so strong in the Lord, his faith was so exemplary, among all the men of the earth, his faith encouraged and it helped him to walk with God, that God looked over the whole earth and God said, Enoch, I was going to give you another 40 more years, but I really want you up here in heaven. I could use your company and your fellowship. Why don't you come on up to heaven? And Enoch, well, Enoch was translated and never had to experience the pain. Well, how did he do that? By faith. He woke up in the morning and walked with God by faith. And that's what the Bible says. I believe right here in verse number uh, not, not in verse number five, but in the Old Testament, it says that Enoch walked with God, known as a man among men for his walk with God. But he did it by faith. Look at verse number seven. The scripture continues, and we learn about Noah. The Bible says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, look at this, not seen as yet. Boy, is that what we do when we try to warn people of the, the fires of hell and the burning hell and the condemnation? We've not seen hell. God's not give us, uh, given us a glimpse or a picture into hell. Thank God for that. But Noah had never seen rain before. And God said, Noah, it's going to rain. And it's really going to rain. And so Noah spent between 100 and 120 years building the ark. He did all of that work. Why? By faith. Now, I imagine his faith was strong in the first year. He's, he got his boys around and said, boys, we've got to build this ark. It's going to rain. What do you mean, what's rain, Dad? Well, I don't really know what rain is, but by faith, I believe it. God said it's going to rain, and it's going to rain. But after year two or three, Lord, this is a lot of work. Lord, this takes a lot of time. We're building this huge ark, and people are making fun of us. But you know what? It was his faith in the Word of God that helped him continue on. By faith, the just shall live by faith. But the Bible continues, and we read about uh, Brother Abraham. Look at verse number 8, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, 
obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. And if you remember the story of Abraham, God gave Abraham a general direction. He was supposed to separate from his family and go the general direction. But God didn't say, Abraham, uh, this you can put this grid coordinates in on your map, and there's going to be a house there for you, and I'm going to give the land, and everything's going to work out. By faith, he obeyed. You see, in Abraham's life, his faith led to his obedience, and his obedience led to his blessing. The just shall live by faith. How did Abraham go, even though he didn't have everything figured out, even though he didn't understand? How did he do that? By faith. The just shall live by faith. But the Bible continues even more. Abraham's famous wife, uh, Sarah, Sarah, who had her name changed to Sarai, or vice versa, forgive me. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 11. The Bible says, through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And she had a baby, if I'm not mistaken, and my memory serves me right, at 90 years of age. How did that happen? It was through faith. God had promised her a son. God had promised her a child. And she believed it so strongly that God answered her prayer and gave her that special child. Then the Bible talks about Isaac in verse 20. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob. Verse 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. All these people by faith. Look at verse 22, the wonderful man Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. You see, Joseph believed that God would visit Israel again. Joseph believed that God would not leave the Jewish people there in Egypt. And Joseph said, not if you leave Egypt, but when you leave Egypt, I want you to bury my, bury, dig up my body. I want you to take my bones and bring them with you and bury them in the land of Israel, in the promised land. That's exactly what they did. But that didn't take place until about 430 years after Joseph would have made, about 400 years or so after Joseph would have made that promise or would have, or would have had that request to the Israelite people. How did he know that God was going to bring them out of Egypt? Because God had already told him that. And he believed it by faith. He could look around and say, I don't see how this would ever work out. There's not even enough people. There's a, how, how are you going to, how are they ever going to get out of Egypt? By faith, he believed that. The just shall live by faith. Hey, the Bible tells us in verse 23 about Moses. By faith, Moses. And there's several verses here about Moses. But how did Moses lead the children of Israel, who were always angry, who were always complaining, who were always upset, who were always bitter? If, the, if there wasn't water, if they had water, they wanted food. And if they had food, they wanted water. And if they had bread, they wanted meat. If they had meat, they wanted bread. I mean, they were always, something was always wrong. Sort of like us, amen. Something was always wrong. But you know what? How did Moses have the strength to be able to lead the children of Israel across that desert into the promised land? By faith. By faith. The just shall live by faith. Verse number 30, when they entered the promised land, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and praise God, the walls came a-tumbling down. Verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Well, you remember the story? They marched around the city, entire city of Jericho, once a day for six days, and on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times, and they shouted, and they blew with the trumpets. What made the walls come down? Was it the pitch of the trumpets? It was not the pitch of the trumpets. Was it the noise of the shouting? It was not the noise of the shout. What made the walls of Jericho come down was their faith. You see, God told them, if you'll do this, this is what I will do, and they believed it. You see, faith leads to obedience, and obedience leads to blessing. The just shall live by faith. All of these biblical examples, they did not see the end product. They did not have uh, the, the, the hindsight that we were able to look back and say, yes, God blessed Abraham and Moses and Jacob and Job and all of these people. They didn't know that, but they obeyed and they followed God by faith. God said it, they believed it, and they made decisions based on that faith. And we get to look back and say, man, look how God used Abraham and Moses. Look how Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. But at the time, they didn't know that. Joshua, you know, was not necessarily, he could not look in the future and see the walls came down, but he believed it by faith. The just shall live by faith. In verse number 31, in that story of Jericho, there's a, a, a famous woman by the name of Rahab, Rahab the harlot. And before she uh, started following the Lord, before she got saved, she was indeed a harlot. The Bible says, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. Hey, even Rahab and her sin, even Rahab, though she had, um, a, a deplorable uh, um, uh, um, occupation, you may say. Uh, Rahab had the faith to believe in the Lord, and she and her family was spared when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Verse 32, uh, look, look what the Scripture says. And what shall I more say? Amen to that. For time would fail me. You see, even preachers back then were worried about the clock. For time would fail me to tell of Gideon 
and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through what, church? Faith. Verse 33, who through what? Faith. Subdued kingdoms, brought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. You see, they did all of those things by faith. It wasn't just that they were saved by faith. And the Old Testament saying, saints, they were saved by faith, just as we are saved by faith today. Salvation has always been by faith, by grace, through faith. But they weren't just saved by faith. They determined to live by faith. And what did that look like in their lives? In Abraham's life, it meant God said, go this direction. Abraham said, yes, Lord, I'm going that direction. Even though I don't know exactly what's waiting for me. Uh, God said, Moses, I want you to lead the children of Israel this path through the desert. And, uh, and, and, God, and Moses said, all right, Lord, I don't totally understand it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm willing to follow you. You see, they did that by faith. The just shall live by faith. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, even today we are commanded to live by faith. You see, these Old Testament saints, they simply obeyed God even though they could not see into the future. They could not see the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. No one never even saw rain. And God, the Bible doesn't tell us that God explained rain to Noah. We don't see that. God simply said, Noah, it's going to rain. He, God did not say, Noah, now it's going to rain. Now sit down, Noah, let me explain. Now rain is these droplets of water that are going to fall from the sky. And Noah, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. And Noah, there are fountains, there are rivers under the surface of the earth, and they're going to spew out. And that's exactly what happened. He didn't say, Noah, there's, a, there's waters that are in the, in the, in the vapor, in the, in the vapor cloud above the earth, and they're also going to come crushing down. He didn't explain all that to Noah. He just told Noah, Noah, it's going to rain, and I want you to build an ark. And that was enough for Noah to spend the next 100 to 120 years of his life building the ark. Wow, that's some strong faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, with that in mind, this is how we can start living by faith uh, today. Now, how would that apply to us? God hasn't necessarily called us to build an ark. Amen. Now, now, if he does, then praise the Lord. Let's get some uh, hammers. And we'll, we, have, we have more than Noah did. Let's get some forklifts, okay? Let's get some chop saws, and we're going to build an ark. Uh, maybe God's not going to send you off into a distant land like Abraham and not tell you where you're going. Uh, maybe God is not going to, like Moses, uh, have you lead one to two million people. But you know what? God has given us plenty of, of commands in his word. And the Old Testament saints, what, how God blessed them is they just followed God at his word. When God told Noah to build the ark, he just built the ark. When God told Joshua to walk around the walls of Jericho, he walked around the walls of Jericho. So what are some things God has told us today, and how could we live by faith? Now let me read a scripture real quick, and then we'll go into the message. All that's by way of introduction. Now 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, let me read it again. The Bible says, it's in parentheses, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. If, if, if Noah would have walked by sight and not by faith, here's what he would have said. God, there's no such thing as rain. God, it's never rain. God, I don't stand rain, and I'm not going to build an ark because it's not going to rain. That, that's how the world thinks. They would walk by sight. If, if God told Moses, Moses, I want you to lead these people around the world, Moses would have said, Lord, it's impossible to lead these people. They have so many problems. There's dangers in the way. Lord, I just simply can't do it. But Moses didn't walk by sight. Moses walked by faith. If, if uh, God would have told Joshua, and he said, Joshua, I want you to march around the walls of Jericho seven times, and they'll come tumbling down. Joshua would have said, that doesn't make sense to me. That's not how you fight battles. We need catapults, and we need soldiers, and we need ramparts. And, but you know what? Joshua didn't walk by sight. He walked by faith. Are you, are you with me this morning? He said, he's not walking by sight. means you can understand it. You can see it. He's walking by simple faith in the Word of God. So I'd like to change your perspective on a few um, topics this morning. I'm not going to preach about something that you've never heard before, but I want to change your perspective of how we, as the just, the righteous, the saved people, how we can live by faith. Number one, think about it this about it this way. Go to church by faith. Think about this. Go to church by faith. Number one. Now, you're in church today. Can I get an amen? You're here. If you're, okay, you're physically here. Maybe mentally you're not. You're thinking about which restaurant you're going to eat at for lunch. But you're physically here today. We go to church by faith. You know, sometimes, do you ever get tired of hearing yourself talk? Wait, you get tired of hearing yourself? Am I the only one? Okay. I get tired of hearing myself talk. You know, as a pastor, how many times I talk to people and they, they have a question. And I'm trying to help them serve the Lord. And I, and I say over and over, you just need to go to church. Well, what, how often are you going to go to church on Sunday morning? Go to church on Sunday night. and Go to church on Wednesday night and go to missions conference. I mean, go to church and go to church and go to church. 
And y'all are probably sick and tired of hearing me say, go to church, go to church. The pastor, we're here, we're at church. Stop saying, go to church. But you know why I encourage people to go to church? You see, if, if, because by faith, I believe that if we go to church consistently enough and we follow God's plan, God will bless us for that. Now, if we live by sight, here's what we would say. Church consists of singing, preaching, fellowship, and free coffee. I have coffee at home. I can listen to music. I can fellowship at work, and I can turn on something and, and get some other teaching. And we would look by sight and say, I don't need church because I have all of these ingredients. I can stay home and do my own thing. Well, that's walking by sight. By faith, if we look at Jesus and Jesus instituted and started the church, if church was not important, this gathering, this physical assembly of believers, why would Jesus start it if it wasn't important? Why would Jesus start it if it wasn't necessary? You see, we go to church by faith. I really don't fully understand it. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you make a commitment to go to church every single week of your life and be faithful, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, God is going to bless your life. God is going to lead you spiritually. God is going to open your eyes to think. I believe that because the Bible says so. So we go to church by faith. We go to church by faith. When you came this morning by faith, you believe that the song leader would be ready. And praise the Lord, the song leader was ready. And you believe that the pianist would be ready. And praise God, she was ready. And you believe that the preacher would have a message that he had studied and, and poured his heart over and that he was going to preach the word of the Lord of God. You believe that by faith, by sight. If we walk by sight, here's what we'd say. Ah, it's the same preacher. I mean, I heard him last week and the week before, and it's the same church people, and the coffee is going to taste the same. And, I mean, you know, why would I go today? What's the big deal? I'll just go next week. I mean, I'm going to be around next week. You see, that's walking by sight. By faith, we understand that church is important because Jesus started the church, and this assembly of believers has been going on for the last 2,000 years. Amen? And I don't think God has any plans of change. See, it changes your perspective. We go to church by faith. And that's why we encourage people to go to church. At Jesus, as I mentioned, started the church, and through the book of Acts, the apostles, they continued the church, and they planted churches all throughout the known world. You see, it was never God's plan to have one big mega church and everyone else around feed off of that one church. No, it was to have churches in every city, in every locality, so that there'd be a, a meeting place for prayer, there'd be a meeting place for teaching the scriptures, there'd be some organism, or sorry, organ, organization for evangelism. You see, we need the church, but we go to church by faith. And, you, and maybe sometimes you think in your mind, and I couldn't blame you. And you say, well, I just don't know if church is really that important. I don't know if it does it really help. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, my back hurt before I went to church, my back hurts after. You know, I struggle with sin before church and I struggle with sin after church. And we can have these, you know, lo this human logic in our mind and we think it's not important. We go to church by faith. God, Jesus instituted the church and whatever Jesus started is good enough for me. And if Jesus instituted it, we go to it by faith, believing that over time and with consistency, God will bless us. That's what Moses did. That's what Abraham did. They didn't understand exactly why and how exactly it would work, but they followed the command of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. We go to church by faith. Hey, number two, we read our Bibles by faith. We read our Bibles by faith. Boy, if there's another thing that I've preached on over and over, go to church and go to church and go to church and go to church. And here we are at church. Amen. But read your Bible every single day. If you have not read your Bible this week and you think that you can come on a Sunday morning and open the Bible and what you, you're just missing out, you're missing out. You realize every time you open the Bible, you're given an opportunity for God to speak to you. Prayer is us talking to God. The Bible is God talking to us. Now, God gave us two ears and only one mouth, okay? So maybe a way to look at it is we should spend twice as much time listening to God than we should do talking to Him. Can I get an amen? Instead, we want to talk to God and moan and groan and gripe and complain when God's trying to talk to us if we'd simply open up the Word of God. And, and when you come here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, of course, we'll have the Bible. But what about Monday? You need God to speak to you on Monday. And you say, preacher, I just don't understand. I mean, why do I need to read the Bible? I mean, I've read it before. Maybe you have. I know what's in it. I basically understand it. Preacher, I don't need to read the Bible because I'm going to come to church and you'll tell me what the Bible says. And I just take your word for it. You see, we read the Bible by faith. Because if we believe that if we read it Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, God's going to speak to us every day. God's going to help us grow as Christians. But if we walk by sight, we say, you know, it's not really that important. 
you know, I'll, I'll open it on Sunday and I get the basic idea. I mean, God made everything and God's going to fix everything in Revelation. You know, what, that's walking by sight. By faith, we realize that this is the precious, holy word of God. By faith, we realize that when we open up, this is not just man's book. This is not just religious literature. This is God talking. To, how could we go a day of our lives and not open up the Bible? How could we not? Do, do we not need God's direction? Do we have it so figured out that God's word is not needful for us anymore? You see, we read our Bibles by faith that God's going to bless the reading and meditating upon his word. Number three, we pray by faith. We pray by faith. This prayer is 110% by faith. You see, the world would say, why would they would they would look at us and say, why would you stop and kneel or stand or however you pray, close your eyes, bow your head, and pray to someone that you can't see? Now, to the world, that does sound kind of silly. Can you get an amen? I mean, who are you talking to? I mean, there's nobody there. Well, I'm talking to the Lord. Well, have you ever seen God? Well, I mean, no. Well, well, how do you know God hears you? Well, he, he said he wasn't. That doesn't make sense. That's walking by sight. Walking by faith says that if we pray, God hears our prayers, unless there's sin in our life. And if there's sin in our lives and we're not dealing with the sin and we're going to our prayer closet before dealing with the sin, God will not hear our prayers because of our sin. The Bible tells us that. But if you get your sin problem taken care of and confess before the Lord, we pray in faith, believing that God will hear our prayers, believing that God in His will and in His time and in His own way will answer our prayers. And that faith is what encourages us to pray. You say, well, I don't need to pray every day. I mean, if I get sick or in the hospital, I'll pray then for God to save me. Well, maybe if you pray every day, God wouldn't have to put you in the hospital for him to get to hear from you. You say, well, I don't really need to pray. I mean, I, I'll, I come to Wednesday night, and that's my prayer time, and I'm good to go. I don't need to pray during the week. Hey, we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith tells us that we pray we have an audience with the Lord God Almighty. We can boldly approach the throne of grace. In the New Testament, when Jesus talked with disciples, Jesus never said, if ye pray, he always said, when ye pray. See, we pray by faith. We believe that God hears our prayers. We believe that God will answer our prayers. And that faith is what encourages us to pray every day. We walk by faith and not by sight. Number four, we give by faith. We give by faith. You see, if we were to talk about uh, the giving and specifically financial giving, we would look at it, if we looked at it from a sight, from a physical standpoint, we would say the economy is tough. Can I get an amen? The economy is tough. Gas is expensive. It was only a few years ago. It was 182, and I remember taking a picture of it because in my lifetime that might have been that might be the cheapest it'll ever be ever ever again. But I remember taking a picture of that. Uh, but the economy is tough, and I mean the cost of living is up. And my wife and I, we have four children, and I love them, but children cost money. I mean they eat, and when the the bigger they get, the more they eat. Okay, and some of y'all have Rottweilers. You know what I'm talking about? They eat. Okay, they're cute. They each had a house and home. And we would say, man, I mean, money's tight and I'm not well. And we would give all these things and I just, I can't give anything to the Lord. That's walking by sight. Walking by faith says, I want to give to the Lord. Brother James teach you when he prayed, he said, Lord, everything we have belongs to you. And boy, is that true. Everything we have belongs to God. See, walking by faith says, I want to give to the Lord. So I'm going to give even if I don't know if I can afford it. I'm going to give because God said, if we put him first, he provide all of our needs. You see, we walk by faith not by sight, in every single aspect of our life. You see, God did not intend just for the super, super wealthy people to give. God intended all of his people to have a part in the giving. In the Old Testament, when they were taking up an offering and they were building the tabernacle, the Bible says they collected so much that the priests had to go out and tell the people to stop giving. What was that? That was from the rich to the poor, from every trade, from every background, from every family there in Israel. They were giving so much to the Lord that there was an over and abundance. But we give by faith. Well, when I get paid and I take 10% of that and I put it in the offering plate, that's a lot of faith because I know by the end of the month something's going to come up and that fleshly side of me is going to say, well, you know you put this amount of money in the offering plate and you could have used that. When I put money in the offering plate, it's by faith that God already knows my need and that God's going to take care of me. We give by faith. And lastly, we witness by faith. We witness. Now, these are general categories, but I want to change your perspective on it. You see, we, we read our Bibles by faith. We pray by faith. We, uh, um, uh, uh, we, we give by faith. We go to church by faith. But number five, we witness by faith. Yesterday, we was, it was raining. It was back and forth, but it was raining yesterday. And yesterday was one of those days where you wake up in the morning and, oh, it's Saturday. And, you know, Saturday's when we go out soul winning and have visitation. But when it's raining like that, the first thing that comes to my mind is, oh, it's raining, okay? 
Because if it's raining, you got to go. How are you going to go door to door without getting wet? And you know, you can have umbrellas. I don't really like umbrellas because every time you duck under a doorway, you got to bring the umbrella down, and it just makes things that much more difficult. But we uh, we found a neighborhood that Brother Kelvin had told me about, and it was some apartments we'd never been to. And I knocked on a door, and this 17 or 18 year old boy, he's a uh, he's in the high school over here at Northeastern, and he gave me about 10 to 15 minutes of his time, and I was able to explain the gospel to him. And he bowed his head and prayed and asked the Lord to save his soul and receive Christ as his Savior. We had another person saved, and another couple ladies. They talked to a young man at the door, and I mean, the Holy Spirit was working on him. You see, God used us in that way, but we witnessed by faith. You see, when we go out, whether it's Saturday or two, it doesn't matter what day, I'm already believing God's going to use us. I'm not, I'm not saying, folks, we're going to go out and shh, we'll just give it our best shot, and you know, whatever happens, happens. I know the Lord's going to bless. The Lord always blesses when a group of people go out and try to share the gospel. But you know what? You need to be a witness by faith. Have you ever thought about your neighbor, whether your neighbor's saved or not? To the left of you, to the right of you, across to you. Have you driven down your road and wondered, hey, my neighbor, he, I always see him cutting grass or raking the leaves in the fall. Is he saved? We witness by faith. You say, well, I don't want to talk to him because he might reject the gospel. We witness by faith that God's going to bless the preaching. You say, I, I can't witness to him. I'm, I'm not able to do that. No, you're not. But we witness by faith. You see, we give forth the word of God. We speak the word of God. And God blesses our witness. See, if you don't have any faith, that's why you don't witness. You don't believe God could use you. You don't believe God wants. Let me tell you, God wants to use you. But you have to have faith to be a witness. Hey, the, some of the last words that Jesus said before he sent it up into heaven, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay, Jesus told us that. Jesus said, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. So our witness for Christ, it starts local. They were physically in Jerusalem, so we reach Elizabeth City, and then we branch out, and then through foreign missions, we're able to preach the gospel all over the world. But you see, we witness by faith. Lord, I'm going to witness to this person. I don't know them, or maybe I do know them. Lord, help me as I witness to them. You see, you have to do that, and if you witness to them, God will bless your witness. So we do these things in the Christian life. We just don't, we just don't do them just because they're in the Bible. We do them by faith, believing that God's going to bless them. Um, boy, you know, we maybe, maybe church doesn't always seem that important. And when Sunday night or Wednesday night, tonight we have Lord's Supper and and we do that four times a year. We have different events and things. But maybe it doesn't always seem that important to you. But that's walking by sight. That's walking by sight. Walking by faith says if Jesus instituted the church, and if the, if the pastor of the church has called for an assembly for some reason, I might as well be present and get some of the blessings that God has for me. You see, we wake up in the morning. We say, why do I need to pray? I mean, I, I got time. I, I, I'm busy. I got things to do. I prayed yesterday. I prayed Wednesday, whatever it might be. No, that's looking at it by sight. By faith, we know that if we pray, God will hear and answer our prayers. We get up in the morning. We're going to read the word. Oh, I've read this before. The proverb of the day or Psalms or if you're reading through the Bible, I'm reading through. <sighs> reading through the book of Numbers. I just finished a little bit. Of reading through the book of Numbers right now. Lord, why do we have to read through the book of Numbers? I mean, it, it's hard, and the chapters are long, and the details are there. By faith, I believe that if we'll continue reading the Word of God, God will bless us for them. You see, we've got to do all of these things by faith. The just shall live by faith. You see, if we're not living by faith, we're not walking by faith, we're not following the biblical pattern that God has for us. And we're going to get frustrated. I'll go to church again. I'll read my Bible again. Pray again. The pastor's going to... Harp on us again to read our Bibles and pray and go to church and be a witness. No, 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 no. That's walking by sight. We walk by faith. God will bless you for the reading if you'll read his word. God will bless you if you'll spend time of prayer. And God will bless your witness. Let us walk by faith and not by sight. Let's pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed, please, as we go into the invitation. Lord, we thank you so much for your word this morning that has given us direction and guidance we thank you for those wonderful men and ladies of the old testament lord and their faith that paved the way for us to follow god i pray that you'd help me lord to not look with to not uh, live my life by sight but lord to live my life walking by faith i pray god we'd have a different perspective of these aspects of the christian life and that we'd stop looking at it through man's eyes or through human logic but look at it through faith May your Holy Spirit convict our hearts as only he can. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's all stand, please. The piano will play in just a moment. If God has spoken to your heart, let's spend time in prayer. Please pray as the pianist plays. If there's a part of your life, something that